Yes. Hey, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. Glad to have you guys checking in today. My name's Aaron. This is Altcoin Daily. This is our channel right here. If you're looking for a channel that brings you daily cryptocurrency videos, come to the right place. Feel free to subscribe. But anyways, let's get into it. Wow, that was a short intro. Short but sweet. Uh, anyways, today I want to start the week off strong. I want to start the week off right. I want to talk cryptocurrency. And I want to talk about the latest in crypto news. Uh, just to give you a little play-by-play -play of what's going to happen, we're going to take a quick look at the market. Uh, we're going to go over to what the experts say is happening in the market. Then we're going to check in with the CFTC. How's those regulations coming? Is this going to be good or bad for crypto? Let's talk about it. Actually, we're going to watch a minute of this guy talking. It's actually pretty interesting. Then uh, we're going to get to the lighter side of news. Kurt Russell possibly nabbing another movie role. Uh, and then I think we're going to finish off with just a quick Electronium update. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a while since we heard from Electronium, so let's see what they're up to. Anyways, I pulled all the news that's fit to print. We're going to go over it all. If at any point you find value in this video, give it a like. It really helps us grow as a channel. We are a, we're still a small cryptocurrency channel, but I think we provide a lot of value. So yeah, let's get into it. Quick look at the market. Right now, we see Bitcoin sitting around $6,480, at least at the time of recording this video. And I was reading some stuff over the weekend, read this one um, expert's opinion. Well, I don't know if he was an expert. He was, I guess it's really just some guy online. I think it was an expert. He said that if uh, Bit that they were looking for uh, support lines uh, with Bitcoin around 6,500. And they said if uh, Bitcoin gets below 6,500, uh, then we can possibly see it look forward to seeing it drop even further uh, but if it never got below 6,500 in the coming days then it could possibly shoot back up relatively quickly now right now it's below 6,500 so does that mean we're going to see Bitcoin keep dropping yeah I guess it's possible um, as for me I'm not worried uh, I'm using this time to either do nothing or to maybe buy a little bit more uh, you know, I bought, I bought a little bit more Bitcoin around 6,350 the other day, 6,400 ish. And if Bitcoin can fall below uh, 6,000 again, maybe I'll buy a little bit more. You know, think about it this way this could be the last time we see uh, the market at such levels. Of course, that's wishful thinking. Um, but the overall point is never invest more than you can afford to lose, obviously. But you know what? I, I tend to think that even a little bit counts. It's like, you know, bring a flask to the bar rather than buy all those expensive drinks or or skip the Starbucks every once in a while or feed your cat every other day. You know, every little bit counts. Even $50 a week is still a good investment, in my opinion. But that would be a good thing to say if I was giving investment advice. But I'm not. You guys should know I'm just some guy who has a general interest in cryptocurrency and I like to make videos about it. It's like we're having a beer talking about crypto. Having a beer on Monday morning. Anyways, uh, if we take a quick look at uh, just the overall chart of the overall market, this is the last month in cryptocurrency. It doesn't look that great. Uh, a month ago, at late May, our, the market cap was around $390 billion, and right now we're almost over $100 billion less than that at $276 billion. But if we zoom out a little bit to see three months, wow, okay, this looks... At least a little bit better i mean we can now we can see some cycles happening we're just in uh, the low point of a cycle hopefully that means we head back up soon i mean the market goes in cycles that's inevitable the interesting thing i wanted to point out was that although right now we're at 275 billion and we're at a low obviously we are still higher than the last recent low which went all the way down to about 245 billion dollars so if this is the lowest it's going to go that would be pretty good because it would still be a higher low than before, which a lot of uh, technical analysts will tell you, which means that's a good bullish sign. Anyways, now, now that we're on the same page, let's jump into the news. Let's start off by going over what experts are saying is happening in the market. Now, this is an article that kind of put together a bunch of experts, different opinions. We're not going to be really reading it. I just want to go over each person's quote. Uh, so for here, this first person, Nahim Aslam chief market analyst at think markets uh and some of what he has to say is tied to the recent 
uh, boutique South Korean uh, uh, exchange that got hacked a few days ago. Anyway, let's find out what he has to say. His thoughts on the market. Exchanges are not utilizing the top-notch technology to protect consumers and hackers. To protect consumers and hackers are taking full advantage of this issue. The question is, is there any limit to these hacks? After every few months, we are seeing the same pattern emerging. This is the result of loose regulatory control and regulators must step in to protect the consumer. Anybody who wants to anyone who wants to do with Anyone who wants to do with anything with exchanges should be forced to adopt high-grade security and regulatory security upgrades. So his general thought is, hey, exchanges need to uh, get on a better level, provide more security, possibly have a little bit of regulation uh, if we're really going to see the market take off. This next quote comes from expert Imen Gunn Searer, associate professor, professor at Cornell University. Cornell, maybe you've heard of it. Uh, Amin says, the current downturn is motivated by one such perceived risk, that is the law enforcement action on exchanges and their efforts to put a stop to price manipulation. This was a long time in the making and cannot and cannot happen soon enough. I suspect that law enforcement actions will be modest in scope and will bring much needed clarity and positivity to the markets. It's really interesting. It sounds to me, she's uh, saying uh, something very similar. Uh, he's He said something very similar uh, to what the last person said is just, we kind of need a little bit of regulation happening. And then the last point I want to touch on in this article before we head over to the CFTC, is uh, three reasons from Tom Lee plus future effects. So Tom Lee, the co-founder and head of research at Fundstrat Global Advisors, who is renowned for his bullish predictions on the Bitcoin price, has given Cointelegraph three reasons why Bitcoin, why the Bitcoin market is diving, and also mentioned his feelings on future markets. He says, quote, I think there are several factors why crypto, cryptos are falling. One, we had a parabolic move at the end of last year. So there's a period of consolidation and price ad adjustment that is taking place. That's true. We got pretty pumped up at the end of last year. That's when, I mean, some of you guys got into the market at that time. And, you know, this could just still, still be part of a correction. He also says, quote, I also think bigger factors this year have been a lot, have been a lot of government actions that have been taken this year that have scared crypto investors. Probably the most notable is the actions taken by U.S. regulators like the E or the SEC taking action against ICOs. Lastly, the pace of institutional investor participation in the space has been taking longer than expected. I think part of that has to do with the slowness of getting some of the on-ramps established. That's interesting. So he's also kind of talking about regulation. So let's swing this right over to the next article because actually what a lot of people see... <laughs> You know, who knows really what's going to bring on the next bull run? If you guys remember a few months ago, you know, people were saying, oh, the uh, the futures are going to expire. Bull run's going to happen. Uh, then it was, uh, what was it, like the Chinese New Year. That's going to end. The Chinese New Year is starting and it's going to end and then we're going to shoot up bull run. Uh, and all this other stuff. So now kind of the current narrative is that once we get some legitimate regulations and once cryptocurrencies are defined a little bit more, security, utility, currency, stuff like that. It's really, we need a little bit more regulations in the space because that's really the only way that uh, big institutional money or even your regular average, everyday person are, is going to uh, feel good getting into the market. So let's swing it over to uh, this article right here. Uh, Cryptocurrencies are a modern miracle, says CFTC commissioner. So we're really, we're really de depending on the CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, to put some regulations in. And it's tough because, you know, and I think they're on the same page. They don't want to over-regulate, but they just have to make the space a little bit safer. So as the regulatory bodies continue to improve their policies regarding digital assets, crypto enthusiasts have been paying special attention to comments from officials involved with the matter. And while many of them have already assumed a decidedly positive stance on cryptocurrencies, few have given them as much praise as CFT, CFTC Commissioner 
Rasin Binam. And that's the guy we're going to watch. We're going to watch, actually, this guy in a second. But in his speech at the BFI summit on June 4th, Binam shared his view that blockchain is powerful enough to transform the world for the better. More than just technology, Binam thinks of blockchain as, quote, an advance that reaches out into every aspect of life. To Binam, the future has almost materialized through the arrival of cryptocurrencies. He explains how blockchain is already remaking economic, social, and political relations and offering unheard of possibilities. In the near future, Binam sees a global economy where smaller countries depend on and prosper from digital assets that are independent of traditional financial institutions. Binam went further to state that blockchain could address and eliminate many of the world's core problems, such as poverty, famine, and lack of health care. The commissioner also sees cryptocurrencies as an invaluable tool to fight corruption, an issue that even the most developed countries continue to suffer from. Although cryptocurrencies aren't yet ubiquitous, uh, Binam says we are approaching a time when they will be. Yes, that's adoption. He sees absolutely no chance of these assets falling out of favor, as he considers them the cornerstone of a new and improved world economy. Eventually, digital assets will move on to play a major role in every economy and become as widespread as paper money, said Binam. Among various tasks, Binam singled out a duty to ensure that Bitcoin exchanges have enough capital to shield them from manipulation. So this is very positive. I mean, there's a few people um, in these committees um, who are pretty seem pretty positive on cryptocurrency. And one of the most positive is this guy right here, Ross and Binam, who said cryptocurrencies are a modern miracle. Now, you guys should, if you're interested, really watch this whole this whole speech. I just want to watch about a minute, 20 seconds, uh, and we'll hear him kind of talk a little bit. So I want you to start it off at 6.55. All right, check this out. The debate on virtual assets is just beginning. None of us know where it will end, but it has certainly forced us to rethink how we regulate. We have learned that virtual assets respect no borders. Regulation is often behind the curve, unable to keep up with daily developments, at least the developments we know about. As a result, some countries have outlawed virtual currencies. Others have new strict laws to control them. Many countries simply don't know what to do. Their policies bewilderment or avoidance. And some countries think virtual currencies are only a problem for developed nations like Switzerland or Germany or Singapore or even the United States. But virtual currencies may, and I believe will, become part of the economic practices of any country, anywhere. These currencies are not going away and they will proliferate to every economy and every part of the planet. Some places, small economies included, may become dependent on virtual assets for survival, and these currencies will be outside traditional monetary intermediaries like government, banks, investors, ministries, or international organizations. We are witnessing a technological revolution. Perhaps we are witnessing a modern miracle, and that may be good or bad. One of the often All right. So, like I said, I watched this whole thing, and I try and catch whenever the uh, CFTC speaks on uh, cryptocurrency, kind of find out what they're thinking. And there are a lot of guys who seem pretty positive. Now, the thing is, even though the big quote is modern miracle, you know, this guy, very realistic. He says, you know, you know, there could present some dangers. We need to really think about this. Well, let's not think too long. Let's make sure we don't, you know, ruin crypto before it starts and never gets going. But anyways, I think this is overall positive. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on to the lighter side of news. Kurt Russell is going to be in a cryptocurrency movie. Wow, that's great. I like Kurt Russell. He's a good guy. Hollywood star Kurt Russell is one of a number of performers set to star in an upcoming indie film about cryptocurrencies. The film entitled Crypto will feature Russell as well as Alexis Bledel, Jeremy Harris, and Luke Hemsworth, among others. Wow, that really went from a who's who to a who's that. <laughs> I mean, I think this person was on um, Gilmore Girls. Uh, this this guy is on, like, Legion. You know, Luke Helmsworth. Imagine imagine the producers calling each other. 
Hey, uh, guess what? I got a Hemsworth brother. Oh, that's cool. Which one? Liam? Chris? No, we got Luke. Anyways, the Hollywood the Hollywood Reporter notes that the film focuses on a young anti money laundering agent played by Bo Knapp, who returns to his hometown in New York to investigate a case of corruption and fraud. Russell is playing the father of Knapp's character, according to the press materials. Quote, cryptocurrency. Uh, cryptocurrency has captured the attention and imagination of consumers and entrepreneurs all over the world, but has never been explored in film in such a nuanced and excited way. Jordan Yale Levine, one of the producers for Crypto, was quoted as saying, <clears throat> um, I mean, it's a good thing they got Kurt Russell, because I don't think any of these other guys will be able to carry a movie. But uh, yeah, better believe I'd see it. If anything, it'll start a nice little conversation. Next, this is pretty interesting. This wasn't really as positive as uh, the CFTC thing I just shared, but this is kind of interesting to see where different people are at in the space. Bank of International Settlements to publish new crypto research. So the Bank of International Settlements, BIS, is dedicating two chapters of its forthcoming annual economic report to cryptocurrencies. BIS, considered to be the central bank's central bank, so that's pretty interesting. We all have strong feelings toward the central bank. Well, this is the central bank squared. This is the central bank for the central bank, the Bank of International Settlements. will publish those two chapters this weekend on June 17th. It was yesterday, Father's Day. Uh, the institution announced this week. The report, the full report will be published on June 24th. The upcoming report will follow the bank's most recent quarterly review which warned that, quote, many cryptocurrencies are ultimately get-rich-quick get rich quick schemes. The review stated, this is pretty interesting, quote, what makes currencies credible is the trust in the issuing institution, and the successful central banks have a proven record of earning this public trust. The short experience of cryptocurrencies shows that technology, however sophisticated, is a poor substitute for hard-earned trust in sound institutions. Is that the case, that the central banks will have our trust? Wow, well, who are these guys? These guys don't talk to normal people, I guess. Anyways, uh, this is pretty much the same story. Um, I just liked I just liked how uh, this uh, Edward Robinson, I liked how he wrote it. So he titled, it's the, the exact same story, Bitcoin could break the internet, but just listen to the way he starts this. Uh, the Bank for Inter International Settlements just told Cryptocurrency World the Bank for International Settlements just told the cryptocurrency world it's not ready for prime time. And as far as mainstream financial services go, may never be. Now check this part out. In a withering 24-page art article released Sunday as part of its annual economic report, the BIS said Bitcoin and its ilk suffered from a range of shortcomings that could prevent cryptocurrencies from ever fulfilling the lofty expectations that prompted an explosion of interest and investment in the would-be asset class. So anyway, this is just, this, <laughs> the central bank for the banks is obviously uh, not too bullish on cryptocurrency. Uh, while the report does say a little bit of benefits, the, uh, this is the benefits they say, the BIS did say that blockchain and so-called distributed ledger technology did provide some benefits for the global financial system. The software can make sending cross-border payments more efficient, like Stellar or Ripple, for example, and trade finance, uh, the business of exports and imports that still relies on faxes and letters of credit, was indeed ripe for the improvements and offered by blockchain-related programs. Anyway, there was just a few benefits and overall a, a report that basically said, hey, come on, we, we who's, the, the central banks have the most trust out of anybody. You need the trust of the central banks. Anyways, that's it today, guys. I, actually, I just wanted to end real quick on an Electronium update. I know Electronium has a huge community. Uh, it doesn't seem so much anymore. I haven't heard anybody really talk about Electronium like they used to in a while. I remember back when I first started this channel a couple months ago, two, three months ago, and I would make uh, videos that were, you know, they were fair yet critical on Electronium and the fan base thought I was crazy, like, you know, Electronium is going to be at a dollar in a month. It's going to be by two dollars by the end of the year. Hey, nobody's rooting for that more than me, but let's 
continue to be realistic. But this is pretty cool. We haven't heard from Electronium in a while. Just to update you guys real quick. New contract signed with UK PLC Mobile Streams. Mobile, this is a press release from them. Mobile Stream signs agreement with Electronium to promote the use of ETN cryptocurrency on their mobile gaming service. We are excited to welcome Mobile Streams to the family as they come on board as part of the Electronium journey. We look forward to our relationship with Mobile Streams as they promote the installation and use of Electronium within their platform. Mobile Streams has a subscriber base of over 7, 750,000 users in Latin America and will enjoy the benefits of our mobile miner and contribute to our efforts of mass adoption. Uh, and basically they go on to say that they're kind of not really changing, but they're, they're really focusing strongly on banking the unbanked in uh, places like Latin America where they don't really have access to banks and they all, all they really do is have a cell phone. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Anybody in, out there still uh, interested in Electronium? Let me know. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much. If you're still watching the video, there is one last piece of news I wanted to say. Altcoin Daily, because of all of us, uh, right now we're at five over 5,000 subscribers. Uh, and I remember when I started this channel back in the day, uh, you know, you can still go back on the old videos and see the videos that I used to do that only got eight views. Uh, so... You know, just like from the first video, and it will continue to the last video, uh, the goal for this channel is to provide the most value uh, for the least amount of money. And since everything on YouTube is free, I guess that means we've got to provide the most value. Uh, there are hundreds of mediocre crypto YouTubers, um, and there are tens of good ones. And I want Altcoin Daily to be one of the good ones. Hey, I want it to be one of the great ones. Uh, and a big part of that is because we have such a... Uh, strong community i feel you know oftentimes uh in the comment section you guys are posting interesting things uh that maybe my brother or i we don't get to uh and you guys point certain things out and we kind of all help each other here because we kind of realize that uh if blockchain is going to gain adoption uh we kind of not uh can't be so tribal about it we really need to be inclusive anyway guys thank you very much a big congratulations to everybody see you tomorrow Congratulations! 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 Congratulations!